what my sound preferences are. I like bass. I like, and if it can have quantity and quality, uh, yeah, I'm rocking it. Especially mid bass. I like the slam over the sub bass rumble. I like my mids super clean. I'm um, not a big fan of, of overly colored, overly thick, overly warm mids. Not a big fan of that. And highs that are very sweet and seem to be able to keep up without ever being overbearing or in your face. So. Hello, bringing you another one. Um, excited actually for this little freak. And let's talk about this new uh, NF Acoos. Now, this company was formerly known as NF Audio, and they identify as a professional music company. And in this one, uh, in the NM20, this little bad boy single dynamic driver is uh, a freak. I love it. It's 120 bucks it's going on sale uh, October 20th here uh, and uh, just to talk about uh, this new one since the rebranding um, this one is made for studio and stage monitoring and to go back into the history of the NM2 this one is in over a hundred thousand professional ears so it has a huge history and it's obviously been very very popular now the NM20 comes in three pretty funky colors uh i've got the blue comes in pink and a gray as well and uh it's it's got a really funky gorgeous shell um i could see this as being something you would want to wear stage performing um because it is quite pretty uh their little branding on the top it has on the back nf Acoos, uh left and right thank you very much and their shells are kind of like this translucent um, with almost a kind of uh, textured uh, shell. It's super comfortable, uh, very easy to wear, stainless steel nozzles as well. The 
I could show you these, but the, honestly, the uh, the it looks better in real life. Um, I'm using the Penon Liquor Orange Tips, great seal. Uh, to talk about the accessories that come in this and the packaging, I love their packaging. I think it's uh, it's not overdone, but yet it's uh, it, it's done enough to make you appreciate what you're getting, and I do like that. Um, so it comes with a nice little. I'm, I'm, I like the cases. I I do right a lot. <laughs> these little guys uh it's usable in the fact that it's big enough for the im and uh a little dongle and there's a little mesh screen enough about the stupid case uh the cable so some feedback to nf Accus because i am critical about other companies as well uh, now, I do understand because this is a professional uh, stage and studio monitor from their professional series that it only comes in a 3.5 tangly free cable. I think this would be a great uh, cable for stage monitoring as well to plug into your packs. Uh, though, for you and me who are going to be listening to this, I would kind of uh, change it a bit uh, here. Uh, just for me, I'm using the fabulous DD Hi-Fi BC-130B uh, pure copper cable. And there's a reason I did that as well. Um, so again, on the beginning of my videos, I tell you my preferences and what I like and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I, I, I haven't mentioned that this is a freak. It's a freak. Uh, it's a freaky I am. It does stuff that it sh shouldn't do. And let's go over it. Uh, this 10 millimeter single dynamic beryllium coated driver, which I love beryllium coated drivers. I love the tonality of uh, the base that they do and uh, how speedy they are as well. So that extra mid bass, mm, right? I do love it. Uh, now, they call this one the MC2L-100P. They named their own drivers, and it was like, mm, you know, to the world. This is my driver, and deal with it, bitches. Uh, kind of <laughs> branding, and I love it. Uh, the three colors, the blue, pink, and the gray. Why not? Um, I secretly wanted the pink, uh, to tell you the truth. Uh, I'm okay with that. Um, and the, let's talk about a little bit about this because I think it's quite special. And I, and I did kind of note it into, I mean, you have the marketing, blah, de, blah, de, blah, it's got this and that. But you can actually see it. But more importantly, you can hear it. Uh, they call this one something called the, the clutter trap. Uh, five levels of dampening filters and tuning sponges to adjust air pressure between the front and rear for better control. And oh my gosh, uh, you can see that black dot. Now, there is a chamber between the front and the rear of the drivers that are adjusting the air pressure. It's doing something to the base, and it might be doing something also to help with that top end. Um, it is crazily, crazily, crazily efficient, just like me. 32 ohms, uh, 108 dB sensitivity, so it's uh, not hard to drive. Um, but let's talk about the sound um, and, and why I keep calling this a freaky IAM. Now, in my tuning preferences, I am not a massive fan of uh, elevated upper mids um, and I am treble sensitive. Okay, but look at this graph and you see, oh my God, there is a whole lot of upper mids and there is a nice bass shelf. Um, but there's a whole lot of upper mids and treble energy with these, these weird dips. The graph doesn't look great. doesn't really sound like the graph. This is one of these weird ones where there is uh, substantially more bass, including sub bass, than the graph shows. And when I was playing it on some sources, I tried it on the KN N3 Ultra low out modern tube mode um, because I was sending it to the XT05 uh, Pro amp um, and I was using a solid copper cable, um, the nice HCK uh, 1950 Saga, nice cable too, pure copper. 
And when I was going through my sources, my ear tips, my all that happy jazz to tune it to me, to sculpt it to my preferences, I liked a copper cable because it. Uh, I didn't want an SPC because, again, treble sensitive and SPC cables for me do add in some upper zingy zingy and I just want the bassy bassy. Um, and the warmth that maybe a pure copper cable does for me. So I was choosing um, warmer sources, and um, I ended up with the um, Onyx XM5. Uh, sometimes you have to be worried about that particular DAP in balanced output because it has a very high output impedance of 6.6 ohm. So just to make sure I just did right now that I wasn't skewing my results by using that source uh, and to make sure that you're not going to get something different from I'm listening to uh, is I graphed it on both with a 10 ohm impedance adapter and without and it made zero difference. Um, so my source is not skewing the the sound um, versus what you may have, but I'm sculpting it to the sound of my source, which this source is very nice on the bottom end. It fills out the bass quite nicely. It leaves the mids very neutral. And again, it has great detail and stage in the top end, but nothing added. So I, and it actually very controls the top end. So it's a great source for me. And that's what I used for my impressions as well. Now, just go over a bunch of stuff. Um, some track impressions. How does this thing sound? Well, Bonfire Heart by James Blunt. Um, exceptional clarity for vocals and instrumental. And you could say that from every track that I tried, every genre, didn't matter. This It had exceptional clarity. I loved it. Bass had really nice thump and texture, uh, which is now here's the some of the surprising stuff. If you looked at the graph, it, it again it looks almost it's not bass shy, but it's definitely the upper mids and treble are elevated beyond uh, the bass shelf. Uh, but the bass of the NM20 can actually keep up to the rest of it. That was surprising and very welcomed. Loved it. Um, ragu. Kings of Leon, male vocals. Here I'm listening for that. The NM20 has enough lower mids to balance out the upper mids again and enough energy to fill out male vocals to give them the right huskiness and the tonality uh, for correct tonality um, and natural sounding vocals. So well done, uh, NFQs. Uh, Brothers uh, Unaware. By live one of my favorite rock bands of all it's hard to find them because if you punch up live it punches up everything that comes as a live recording so great band stupid name uh some rock uh even at volumes i keep thinking those upper mids were gonna get fatiguing but they just don't it's just clean music um though i I do enjoy the NM20 more at medium volumes for longer sessions because that is a lot of info up there. And I think what's happening is why the upper mids don't get fatiguing in this set is because the lower amount of information you get into the the, the bass and the mid bass also carries up into the upper mids and that treble you get and so the upper mids aren't as uh in your face or shouty so it, that's a bit surprising in this set this set is tuned a little differently and uh in a single dynamic driver it, it makes it incredibly engaging uh so and then I tried it. Uh, I did the old Simgot uh, trick. It's like, uh, damn, those upper mids are really intense. Should I knock it down? So here I started playing with some uh, tuning filters on the nozzle, 200, 300, 400, 500. Actually, I started with 500 and I worked my way down. And my conclusion was this thing doesn't need any help in the tuning. Uh, if you knock down some of those upper mids, it takes away its special sauce and uh, it doesn't need it at all. So unlike the EA 500 LM from Sengot, the or, or most of them, where the upper mids were getting fatiguing this one is not like that it sounds different it's a freak 
And it's finally nice to hear something that is not scooped out on the bass uh, and the lower bass, the mid bass. It has body, it has depth, it pulls down really low when the information is in the track as a monitor like I am should. So uh, again, Professional Series, uh, NF Akuz knows what they're doing. Their engineers are bang on. When they're telling you a description of something, from what I have realized and their factory graphs, they are there. There's there's no fudging anything going on there. The mids are full, clean, kind of defies again what the graph is implying. Uh, Add some 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 nice warmth and some thickness. Um, and again, very track dependent, source dependent, monitor like tuning. So. Sometimes you can hear some recessed uh, vocals, uh, but that isn't so much of the NM20 as it is the recording. So again, I got to give kudos and credit to uh, this IM for what it does do. Um, With this much upper mids and treble on paper in my ears, Again, for long periods, I normally find fatiguing, um, and and the NM20 is, uh, for me, not like that. It's a really just fun, engaging, dynamic, kind of V-shaped sound signature, but with some great treble extension. Uh, It's a great driver. It's a great IAM, and if you want something that uh, is different, it's a bit off the beaten path i think this is a great one to uh consider so and fqs uh some feedback for you uh offer this maybe as uh two options 3.5 for the musician side and if you can uh put a 4.4 balanced uh version on here as well love the cable um uh, just would love to see that uh, maybe in a 4.4 balanced uh, version as well um, and or um, a copper uh, cable because the copper cable for me, again, kind of t- honed it to my preferences, didn't exaggerate the top end for treble sensitive people and um, just really let me enjoy this uh, I am. Again, great job. I've, I really love their stuff uh, and the little things that they they do. Um, one thing my daughter pointed out uh, as well is she every time one of these comes in for me, she steals my ear tips from you guys. Uh, four sizes. Not everyone's ears are the same. Uh, extra small, small, medium, and large. You're catering to everybody. And I think that's just something I ha- I shouldn't have I should have pointed out many reviews ago, but I'm doing it now. Uh, the RA15, uh, that little guy is my daily carry in my man bag. Um, I love that little I am. I think it's super comfy. Um, and again, I, uh, I'm done with this review. I've, I've gushed enough. Uh, I like it. It's energetic. It's fun. It's a, a bit different. It's off the beaten path. It's not harmonish. Um, it's and uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs>